Listen to me. If there was a wise man who would ever think of this, they would say in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. For I am the man himself. This is the Club of the Man 1993, and we're back here for some more baseball news. We've got a lot of transactions happening from the past month, and as usual, there will be two separate videos for transa recent transactions. One, the more minor, not as big of ones to talk about, but then there's also going to be, of course, one with like the bigger names, some big contract extensions, some other big contracts that may have been signed recently there's still a few people left on the free agent market though so there's a chance we of course will not be done we are approaching spring training the super bowl is now in the rearview mirror and uh, we'll actually i think pitchers and catchers have just reported or at least truck days have just happened and major league baseball season is almost here and again there's still a few names out on the market like blake snell and cody bellinger uh, but there's some others who have found some new homes for the 2024 baseball season, or to start at least. But let's roll in and talk about these 20 minor transactions we've had in the recent month. Again, not in any specific order. Uh, well, some of the bigger ones are towards the end, like the bigger names. Uh, but we're going to start with a couple that are returning to a former organization of theirs. Starting off with Matt Carpenter, who signed a one-year deal with the Cardinals um, and he apparently though, listen to this. So Carpenter was already under contract for 2024, uh, when he was traded to the Atlanta Braves recently this off season, but then the Braves released him. So the Braves are more responsible for the rest of his salary. The Cardinals will only have to pay him the, the prorated league minimum for any time spent on the roster. Uh, this is more kind of like a return deal for Carpenter. Who's now 38 years old. Right at the end of his career, could this maybe be like a last year, you know, like retirement return maybe. He has spent most of his career, of course, though, with the Cardinals. Um, and, of course, you know, he bounced around in the, in the infield, mostly third base, first base. But mostly, of course, DH duty the past couple of years. Low batting average, but has pulled out some power, though. Uh, so he definitely probably is more of a DH option for them, as, of course, they do have... Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt still on their roster as well. Um, as the Cardinals do kind of hope to get back into contention. Uh, based off of some of these signings, though, and acquisitions, it is going to be a very interesting year for the National League Central for sure. And I think all five teams have a chance to possibly contend in that division. Not saying, of course, win a World Series, but all five teams, I think, do have a chance to contend. Speaking of the the of the um the National League Central, the um the Cubs grabbed Carl Edwards Jr. on a minor league deal back on January 26th. He will be, of course, a a a non roster invite to spring training. He will return to the organization after spending some time away. Um, I'm trying to see what where he of course has been since. Uh, of course, he was just recently, of course, with uh, the Nationals, and he had an injury cutting short his 2023 campaign, and of course, he will now have to work his way back to the roster. Of course, injuries have led to, the, to the decline, but of course, he has, of course, was on the Cubs roster back when the Cubs won the 2016 World Series as well. So, some experience there and a familiar face. It's nice to see going back with the Cubs, of course, is Carl Edwards Jr. We also have Carlos Carrasco returning back to the Guardians. Well, formerly Cleveland Indians, but he signed with them to a minor league deal on January the 28th. Um, 
And, um, of course, this is the first time he joined them in a trade with the Phillies back in 2009. Uh, he spent more than a decade with the club with a 377 ERA. Uh, of course, with injuries and whatnot kind of happened as well. He did have some Cy Young votes as well at the time as well. Uh, he was also then included in the blockbuster trade with Francisco Lindor going to the Mets. Um He's now 37 years old. Um, he had a 4.87 ERA in 443 and 2,000 innings, working back to the 2019 season. So I would say, of course, you know, not too bad. Uh, but even if he's not able to return back to form and provide the club with the quality back of the rotation production, um, he can definitely help though out some of the younger guys, definitely as well as noted. But he's definitely getting towards the end of his career as well. But a nice. Reunion here as well, as the guy, of course, did recently beat cancer as well a couple of years ago. Um, so it's a nice reunion there as well. And one that's like not as big, but it's somewhat of a reunion here, is the Padres are bringing back Jerks and Profar on a one-year deal. It was announced earlier um, this week. Um, of course, um, he said it completely up and down. Uh, last year was another downswing. Um, he opted out of his previous deal with the Padres at the end of 2022. Um, and then, of course, he went off to Colorado. Didn't work out there as well. And then he eventually, I believe, was released. He did return back to the Padres later in the year and finished strong. Um, but then, And then the Padres have brought him back on another one-year deal as well. Okay, he's been a very back-and-forth player for sure. But again, brand new utility role, both the infield and the outfield as well. As the Padres still have a bunch of stacked names in their lineup, although they did trade away Juan Soto. Um, I'm not sure they're, they're going to trade away anybody else. I know that apparently Jake Cronworth's been discussed in some deals as well. And, of course, their pitching rotation definitely doesn't have it. So I definitely see the Padres probably getting a fourth-place finish this year in that um, National League West uh, based off, of, of course, some other acquisitions that are made that we'll probably most of them talk about in the major transactions video. Now to some minor league deals. The Mariners grabbed Cole Tucker on a minor league deal back on January the 28th. Um, Last winter, uh, he he had signed with the Rockies. Didn't lead to much in the majors as well. His contract was not selected to make roster until August. And Tucker appeared in only five major league games. And um, yeah, he was elected to free agency at the season's end as well. Seems like that Tucker, T Cole, sorry, Cole Tucker, who is married to Vanessa Ann Hudgens, as I probably mentioned every time I talk about him, because he's a former Pirates um uh, top draft pick didn't really work out for the majors with the Pirates as he moved all of the diamond. We'll just see if he gets a shot at the Mariners. Uh, right now, it just doesn't look like Tuck Tucker Carl. Can you want to say Tucker Carl? Probably because my, my wife's been watching Tucker Carlson as, the whole time I've known her. But Cole Tucker. Cole Tucker. I can probably see him just playing in the minors again. But yeah, I talk about him because he used to be with the Pirates. So, best for Cole Tucker as well. And Mrs. Cole Tucker as well, Vanessa Ann Hutchins. Uh, Ken Giles, former closer, signed a minor league deal with the Braves back on February uh, 2nd. He was, of course, closer with the Blue Jays and Astros as well. Um, he's 33 years old. He was one of the game's best relievers at the time. Uh, of course, from 2014-2019, racked up 114 saves had consecutive sub-2 ERA seasons. And, of course, entries, though, have definitely derailed him, of course, as we've known since. He'd signed a two-year deal with the Mariners from 2021 to 2022. It didn't really work out from there as well. He was injured again, but, of course, when he pitched, he was not strong there as well. Um, and, of course, now, of course, with the Braves now, maybe he can earn his way back and get another spot if he returns back to form. He's only 33 years old, uh, so he definitely probably has some time in the tank. He just got to mainly stay healthy. So hopefully it'll work out for Ken Giles in the long run. Another former Pirate, Josh Harrison. Jay Hay is returning back to the National League Central, but this time he's signing with the Atlanta Braves. On February 15th, he signed a minor I'm sorry, February 5th. The 15th is today. The 5th, he signed a minor league deal with the Braves. He's heading to his age 35 season. He appeared in just 41 games last season, um, splitting between time and, and all over the place. 
Um, you know, more of a utility guy. You know, of course, he definitely though hasn't been, you know, proven his worth to be remaining in the majors. But of course, with the designated hitter role, there's some flexibility to get more bats. But there's also more of a chance he's spending more time on the bench as well. Um, of course, there's several, um, you know, names that the Reds have in their lineup, such as Ellie, for the infield, says Ellie De La Cruz, Jamir uh, Candelario, Jonathan India, Noel V. Marte, Matt McLean, and Spencer Steer as well. Of course, you know, there is no Joey Votto currently at the Reds, although he could resign maybe if no one else picks him up. They may bring him back for like a courtesy, like, you know, retirement deal or something like that. Uh, but we'll see what Jay Hay has to offer with the Reds for sure. Let's see if he gets any opportunities in Cincy. Going back to the American League Central now, we got Mike Moustakis, who yesterday signed a minor league deal with the Chicago White Sox. Uh, he will try to blaze way onto the roster for a 14th season. Of course, the original Kansas City Royal. Um, you know, has dealt with some injuries and such that have definitely hampered him in his career. Um, of course, he had rebounded, of course, with the Brewers. And then when he um, signed with the Reds, though, he unfortunately was dealing with heel and calf injuries. And then he was released after the third year. And he has signed minorly deals with the Rockies. He spent some time, of course, with the, um, the Angels at, at times as well. And um, not really much after that. Um, so yeah, so maybe he can you know find the spot to get back back on the roster of course as well. Uh, the shot the the, cup, the White Sox of course did have Andrew Vaughn and Yohan Moncada uh, in the corner infield positions penciled in, and they also added Nicky Lopez. And Paul DeJong in the middle infield as Moose has had a history of playing third base and also second base as well with the Brewers as well there. Of course, in DH roles, but of course, could rotate in there as well. Possibly, we'll see. I don't know if he'll return back to form he had with Kansas City and of course, his brief time with Milwaukee where he was, you know, playing well. But unfortunately, his injuries and his on-field performance hasn't really been good for him. But... We'll see if he can maybe turn it around in Chicago. We got that. The Pirates grabbed another former starting pitcher in Willie Peralta, signing him to a minor league deal back on January 31st as a non-roster invitee. He's 34 years old now and had a nice two-year run with the Tigers in 2021 to 2022. Um, in the time he had pitched 132 innings, split between the rotation and bullpen, uh, had a 293 ERA as well. And then, of course, things didn't go well um, when he went to the Nationals and he opened the season, of course, in AAA. And then when he went to the Majors, he pitches a 631 ERA. Of course, he is a former Milwaukee Brewer, uh, had some solid performances there as like a middle to end of rotation guy, of course, there as well. Um, so, you know, I don't know if he, he could win a spot on the roster. Of course, the Pirates do have... Some names in that rotation, again, with Mitch Keller, Martin Perez, uh, Marco Gonzalez as well, who they're relying on, uh, Ronzny Contreras. They did lose Johan Oviedo for the season due to Tommy John. They also got guys, again, like Luis Ortiz uh, and Quinn Priester. Of course, also, they're wondering, and I mean, my cousin asked me this the other day, the Pirates are rushing Paul Skens. Uh, through the Myers as well, the number one overall draft pick in 2023. So, one people wonder if maybe he may make his main roster debut sometime this summer. We'll see. Again, they are moving him pretty quickly, though. But Willie Peralta could be another option. Again, the bullpen course is stacking up. Wait, wait till you hear who the. Again, I can't believe I haven't talked about this yet. Wait, though, till you hear, though, who the Pirates signed in the next video. That we do for the major transactions. The Red Sox, thinking of injuries, injured players, actually, they signed Michael Fulmer to a minor league deal as well. Um, of course, recognizable. Of course, you know, has had a solid career both in the, in the rotation and in the bullpen, though. Uh, of course, though, he did undergo a... Um, um, undergo surgery... 
this offseason. I believe he is probably going to miss most of the season, I think, from what I remember. Um, yeah, yeah, he he went, he went he had UCL revision his right elbow back in October. So, presuming he'll come back with a 2025 spring training invitee. So, I guess he's under contract with the Sox, but more so looking forward to the future with him. And again, he could contribute when he comes back. We'll have to wait and see, but he will not be playing in 2024, but he does have a home, possibly 2025 in Boston. The Marlins then also grabbed um, Trey Mancini on a minor league deal as well. First base an outfielder who is unfortunately on the downfall um, after signing a two-year deal with the Cubs last offseason. It did not work out, and the Cubs released him after the trade deadline. And the Reds added him on a minor league deal, um, and apparently didn't go much anywhere. And he got released out of the blue. I didn't even know he was he got went to the Reds, but um, he of course compete for a spot, um, trying to get back on track as he was a former long time um, Baltimore Oriole. Um, of course, dates back all the way to the 2022 All-Star Game, which, of course, wasn't that when he competed in the Home Run Derby? I think so. Or was it the year before? One of the two. Because he had missed either 2020 or 2021 after battling colon cancer. Uh, but he came back, was runner-up in the um, in the Home Run Derby, and it was probably after that. He might have been another person who was a victim of a victim of the Derby. Because some people do tend to struggle and, and like get their swing thrown off after participating in that home run derby, which is guys like guys like Mike Trout and a few other guys just have never been in it because it's always thrown off their swing based on where people get. Some people know how to handle a derby, some people don't. But um, hopefully, um, oh, it was, it was twenty twenty two. He got diagnosed with colon cancer. Uh, hopefully, though, maybe he can turn around in, in, in Florida. We'll see, though. I do have hopes for Trey Mancy. He's still young, too. What? He's only, what, 31? Like, wait, how old is he? I thought he was in his early 30s. But just checking here. I can't find an age. We'll see, though. But hopefully he does turn around in, 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 in Miami. He, he deserves to. And I just dropped something on the floor. Nothing weird. It was just my pack of my um, AirPods. Um, this is a name I haven't heard for a long time. I forgot about this next guy. Miguel Sano signed a minor league deal with the Angels. He, of course, has dealt with a lot of, though. He's 31. He'll be 31 in May. He's the same age as me. Um, he'll be 31 in May. He's a couple months older than me. He, of course, has a string of tremendous power, launching 118 home runs from 2015 to 2019. But, of course... The strikeout rates and injuries just hasn't been a fan of him since then. He had been signed to a three-year extension going into 2020, and he still had 43 home runs between 2020 and 2021. Uh, one of them being short of just 60 games, but his strikeouts and on-base numbers went down drastically as well. Punching out 37% of the time while hitting 218. In 2022, his knee his knee injuries limited him to just 20 games, and he hit just 083 during that time. They let him go after that, and um, he didn't sign over 2023. And recently, he played for Estrellas Orientals in the Dominican Winter League and appeared to be healthy. Um, in 107 games he played there, he struck out 30 times, but also drew 14 walks and launched a couple of homers and had a 225 batting average. So, of course, he could, you know, get some time at like third base or first base or DH if he gets a spot, of course, with Shohei Otani no longer being there. Anthony Rendon, who signed a seven-year deal and has barely played any games with the Angels because he's been nothing but hurt since he came to the Angels. There, of course, you know, maybe a chance for Miguel Sano. Maybe he will bounce back, but he's got to stay healthy. He's got to get that swing back under control. Um, though, take a break from Miley deals for just a second. 
The Angels also grabbed Aaron Hicks on a one-year deal um, as well. He's 34 years old now after a strong run as kind of like a fourth outfielder for the Yankees for quite a while. Um, he, of course, you know, fell off, went to the Orioles last year, and, um, you know, had a decent time with Baltimore uh, as well. And then he played in 65 games, hitting seven homers and a 275 ERA uh, ER right, batting average. Um, so showed some hope. So hopefully uh, it could be a, he, he could also have another strong year with the Angels, maybe and bounce him back a little bit. Again, he's I don't expect him to be like an all star or anything, but he definitely can contribute to this Angels organization when healthy for sure as well. And we'll see, of course, where he goes. So best of luck to him. Um, the Nationals just recently signed Jesse Winker a couple days ago to a minor league deal. Uh, Winker, who's only 30 years old, of course, was once one of the best hitters for the Cincinnati Reds. Unfortunately, though, it's kind of been downhill from since leaving the Reds, going to the Mariners in that trade along with Eugenio Suarez. And, um, you know, Suarez, you know, did well in Seattle. He's now, he's got traded to um, Arizona this offseason. Winker, though, hasn't fared too well. And, of course, you know, his numbers have gone down. He's slumped. And, of course, he did go to the Brewers last offseason uh, for Colt Wong. And he hit just, what, 199 with only one home run and 197 appearances. Um, he never appeared in the majors again, though, after he was placed on the, the injured list with a back spasm back in July. Of course, the Nationals are still in the rebuilding with a bunch of young players. So, of course, this could be, you know, a chance for Winker to rebound and help some young talent. Uh, of course, there's another guy who we were just about to talk about in a second that they did, the Nationals did grab as well. Uh, but, I mean, he's only 30. Still young. Maybe it's health. Maybe it's just, you know, it's just change of scenery didn't work for him. But, you know, again, if you can get back to where he was in Cincinnati, he's a nice pickup for, for Washington. Probably the last place finish, though, again, in the, um, well, them or the Marlins. Well, I think the Marlins more, nah, I think, I think, I think the Nationals are going to be last place again in, in the National League uh, West. Also, they also signed Joey Gallo, the Nationals. Back on January 27th, signed him to a one-year deal, who's, who's also only 30 years old. He's being called the poster boy for the three true outcomes in a major league career that's almost a decade old at this point. He, of course, one time was a great power hitter for the Rangers, uh, hitting 198 home runs in 863 games, striking out, of course, 38% of the time as well, but still drew walks and was still a dangerous hitter. And then, of course, once he got traded to the Yankees, it all fell off. He has not been the since since he left Texas. Through his career, though, he's batted over a little below the Mendoza line, the 197 batting average. Um, of course, he's lopsided, of course, with having still the home runs and the walks. He had signed a one-year deal with the Twins and, bat, and batted uh, just 197 with 21 home runs. He struck out 42.8% of the time. That sucks. Um, of course, his production has not really rebounded, of course, you know, the past couple of years. So maybe it'll be the case in Washington between first base and outfield. More of a veteran leader as well. Um, but again, we will just have to wait and see. But Gallo is really on the downside, unfortunately. A couple bigger ones, though. The last five are kind of bigger ones. Carlos Santana did sign a one-year deal with the Twins back on February 2nd. A uh, team who is still kind of contending a little bit in the weaker uh, American League Central. Who um, Santana is no stranger to. Spending time with his career with the Guardians. Um, also with some time with the Royals as well. Uh, of course, the Pirates and Mariners have been interested in bringing him back this offseason. After the, he was briefed with the Pirates last year. Told he was traded with the Brewers. Um, but, um, of course... There was a trade that happened with the Twins. They got rid of a longtime player. So this is kind of a way to kind of help, you know, replace that bat a little bit. 
Uh, as Santana, can, he's almost 38 years old, but you know, he still has some pieces to contribute to a lineup. He hit 240 um, with six, uh, over 619 play appearances this past year, hitting 23 homers and 33 doubles and picking up his first triple also in four years as well. So Santana's got some gas in the tank. He can't contribute to the Twins as I believe he can do so. So that was a good sign there. Uh, we also got the Diamondbacks grabbing Jock Peterson coming back to his old division of the National League West. Um, signing a one-year deal, 12.5. He'll be 32 in April. And, of course, he has slugged 186 home runs since his career began back in 2014, playing most time with the Dodgers, spent sometimes also with the Cubs, Braves, and the Giants this past year as well, uh, hitting 23 home runs as well. He was also part of the 2021 World Series champion Braves as well. The Giants have... Splash a couple other names, too. We'll talk about, of course, in the major transactions. He signed a big pitcher. And he also just signed a nice power bat as well. Well, inconsistent. But, I mean, Peterson definitely is a lot, has a lot of good experience as well. Um, I know his batting average, of course, has dropped off um, over the years as well. But, you know, he still has a valuable bat to him. Um, of course, he will be... Um, Probably more DH roles as, of course, they do. The Diamondbacks do have um, their um, Rookie of the Year and probably eventually MVP, Corbin Carroll, uh, Alec Thomas, and Lourdes Gurriel Jr. as well is in there as well. So they do have some pieces there. Uh, of course, they also got Eugenio Suarez and Eduardo Rodriguez to add in too. So the Diamondbacks, again, who were kind of like the underdogs in the playoffs last year, won the pennant. Uh, fell to the Rangers in the World Series, but again, have kept some pieces around. They're still a young team and had really good showing, of course, especially if they get the World Series. And adding a veteran in like Peterson is also a you know smart move. So we got Jock coming in. Royal sign, former Pirate, Adam Frazier to a one-year deal back on January the 30th as well. Uh, with a buyout option in 2025 as well. Uh, he had just 240 in 4 and 45 appearances with the Orioles last year. Uh, you know, he still has a nice, you know, little spark plug for sure to add to someone's lineup. Uh, as the Royals also, don't sleep on them. They've signed several veteran, like the Pirates. They've signed several one-year veteran contracts that I think could contribute to, you know, some young talent success for sure this year. Of course, if they don't, you know, contribute, then they'll probably be good trade pieces to get prospects at the trade deadline. But that may not be the case for sure. Uh, Frazier, of course, is only 32 years old. Has, again, had um, some great, you know, campaigns for sure. And um, I think he's a former All-Star, too, of the Pirates, I believe. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, he probably will contribute to, uh, to pieces like, you know, him, Hunter Renfro, Michael Waka. They just signed their next franchise player. We'll talk about him in the major signings. They still got Salvi, Salvador Perez in there as well. So, um, so yeah, we'll see because the Royals could contend. I again, we had some improvement from them, the Tigers. I think we may see the Royals get a second or third place finish at least. I think the Twins will probably get first again. Um, Guardians or Royals probably right behind them in second or third. We'll see. Um, so yeah, good sign there for the Royals. After that, we got Gary Sanchez, who signed a one-year deal with the Brewers um, to add some depth to their lineup as well. Um, he's 31 years old. Uh, of course, surprisingly, after he was he left the Yankees, went to the Twins, had a little bit of a hard time getting a job last year. Uh, he had signed with the Giants and Mets on minor league deals. Um, didn't really work out. And he finally um, signed the Padres, and he played in 72 games, 260 play appearances, hit just 218, but still hit 19 homers. Still got that power because he, what, hit 20 homers in 53 games in his rookie year or whatnot. So the power's been there, but of course the defense has always been a little bit iffy, of course, which is probably the reason why they he's not been as easy of a commitment uh, to grab as well. But of course the Brewers... Have been kind of on, on down on payroll this offseason. Lost two of their biggest pitchers, of course. 
One's a free agency, but was hurt anyways. The other one was traded to the Orioles. We'll talk about him in the major transactions. Um, but yeah, he still showed some hope there uh, with that, that run with the Padres. They almost reunited with the Padres, but they moved on from him, and he signed with the Brewers instead. So good pick up by the Brewers. And finally, um, I keep forgetting how old this guy is, but on January 31st, Justin Turner signed a one-year deal with the um, with the Toronto Blue Jays back on the 31st. Of course, he could get some bonuses depending on how many plate appearances uh, he reached. Uh, Turner is just turned 39 years old, um, but he's not really showing much signs of really slowing down. Um, this past season with the Red Sox, he hit 276, 23 home runs, 31 doubles, Low strikeout rate, played 146 games, and got 626 appearances. This is a good pickup for them because they didn't re sign Matt Chapman, I don't think so. So, definitely, well, I think he's more going to be so of a designated hitter, but yeah, I mean, he's consistent still. He, of course, you know, had a long tenure with the Dodgers after originally being drafted by the Mets, I believe. I know he was a rookie with the Mets. But, of course, second base, bumped over to third base. Now, of course, DH. Again, though, he um, he definitely is a good pickup. He still has something left to offer. And, of course, the Blue Jays, who they want to contend in that tough American League um, East that's always tough with the Yankees and Red Sox, who both finished towards the bottom last year, by the way. Rays still have young talent. Blue Jays still have you know, our, our, our favorites as well. Orioles, though, have been on the rise, of course, the past couple of years. So don't sleep on them as well. Um, but yeah, I like the sign here with, with the Blue Jays grabbing um, Justin Turner. Again, he's 39 now, but apparently he's still got something left in the tank. So we'll see what he offers with the Jays when he goes to Old Canada. And of course, guys, that does it for this video. That's my... Um, some minor transactions. We got, of course, some more major ones that we'll talk about in another video, which should be posted later on today. And we'll roll from there. So, guys, what are your thoughts on all these transactions? Some of the returns, like uh, Matt Carpenter is going back to the Cardinals. We've got um, Trey Mancini going to the Marlins. Cole Tucker, probably not going to be going to be succeeding in the majors, unfortunately, but he's got Vanessa Ann Hudgens going to the Mariners. <coughs> Carlos Santana going to the Twins. Many more we talked about. You guys thoughts down? Oh, yeah, Gary Sanders going to the Bruce. I can be here all day reciting them all again. But leave you guys thoughts down in the comments section below. And also be sure, as always, to slap a like on the video and subscribe for more content coming to my channel. And follow me on Twitter as well at the Club of the Man 93 you may also follow me on TikTok and Instagram at the Club of the Man 1993. Until then, guys, I'm checking out. And I'll catch you all later. And do not forget, in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. And for I am the man himself. And that is not just an opinion, my friends. That is a fact of life. Yeah!